<laughs> so how racist is Hollywood, anyway? Uh, these people are constantly lecturing middle America about racism and white supremacy and Black Lives Matter. It's all projection. All of this is projection, as it turns out. Welcome to Comic Artist Pro Secrets. I'm Ethan Van Skyver. Before we begin this video, and I can't wait to get into it, if you wouldn't mind considering uh, hitting the subscribe button, ringing the bell for notifications, I would really appreciate it. Uh, like this video, share this video. That's how we can fight back against YouTube's deliberate suppression of channels with messages uh, like mine. And again, my message is about truth, justice, uh, the American way. Uh, and uh, I don't understand why they'd want to suppress my message. Uh, it must be because I'm too, uh, perhaps, sexy, uh, elegant, eloquent. Uh, Allie Larder, totally beautiful woman. I love Allie Larder. I loved her uh, in the Resident Evil movies. She's just so, I don't know, man. There's something about her. Uh, but uh, according to Leonard Roberts here, this is Leonard Roberts, uh, maybe she's only beautiful on the outside and not on the inside. I don't know. I'm not sure. But he, he wrote a whole essay about how he was mistreated, how he feels it was probably uh, for racial reasons. Uh, this guy is uh, on a quest now, just like Ray Fisher. We know Ray Fisher as Cryborg from the Justice League movie, uh, who is blaming Joss Whedon, who took over the movie after Zack Snyder left for uh, family tragedy reasons. Uh, you know, he's blaming Joss Whedon, uh, Jeff Johns, John Berg, others involved with the Justice League movie for treating him in a racial way, uh, in a racist uh, way, he feels, in a bigoted and biased way. Um, and uh, he's gone to town. He's, he's actually had an investigation at Warner Brothers. Uh, they've, uh, they've fired Joss Whedon. They've actually, whatever they found in the investigation has led uh, to uh, some real change, some real change. So we're going to be seeing more of this, I think, because of the success of Ray Fisher, the attention he's gotten, and the change, the punishment that has been handed down from corporate. Uh, I think we're going to be seeing more cases like this. And here's, uh, I guess here's the first one. Uh, Leonard Roberts was on a show called Heroes 2006. It was a show I didn't watch because I thought it was totally lame. It was being written by, uh, what's his name, who used to work for DC. There were so many people. There were all these writers who kind of, uh, would go around from, uh, I don't know, they, they were glad handers, and they would leech their way onto uh, different big projects in television. Then they'd come back and work in, uh, work in comics for a little while. What was that guy's name? Joe something or other. Uh, anyway, uh, he was working on the show, and for that reason alone, I thought it was probably really lame. I didn't watch it. Many people did. They said the first season was good. It was good uh, for everyone except for Leonard Roberts, who is saying... Um, that he was, first of all, uh, his superpowers in the show were that he was he was able to walk through walls. Uh, and he was in jail, of course. Of course he was in jail. Wasn't he whitey? Uh, and he walked out of jail, and I don't know, he was in some kind of... I guess he was married uh, to Ali Larder in the show, uh, and they had a sex scene in which Ali Larder was supposed to be in bed. They're a married couple. Uh, he says that Ali Larder treated, her very, treated him very coldly, very dismissively. And she was wearing like a strapless, a uh, strapped gown, had straps on. And they were like, hey, you know, you're going to be under the covers, under the blankets. We wonder if you wouldn't mind lowering the straps. This is according to uh, Leonard. Could you lower the straps on your nightgown so it looks like you're naked? So it looks like you're naked in the bed with uh, this black man. And she, according to Leonard, blew her top and said, this is extremely disrespectful that you would ask me to do this as though... They asked her to, uh, you know, take off her clothes when really all they did was ask her to take down the straps of her dress and get under the... Okay, so anyway, uh, he was like, wait a second. Uh, is this because of bigotry? Is it? Uh, and Ali Larder did not pay him any attention. Now, he, he she, after, this, uh, after this event happened, after the blow up on the set, uh, evidently Ali Larder uh, received a gift of wine and a note saying, look, you know, we're partners. Um, I want to see this through. I respect you. You respect me. Uh, according to Leonard, she didn't even acknowledge uh, the gift of his wine and note. And he took that as, look, Ali Larder doesn't like me very much. This guy's bouncing around in the uh, going from office to office of the creative staff, uh, and eventually uh, they tell him. Even he's trying to connect. Let me connect with you. She's like, no, uh, I feel disrespected by what they asked me to do in bed with you. In the meantime, by the way, she had a scene with Adrian Pastar, who was a white guy, uh, and she went all and she's like, is there anything I could I could stand on my head? I, I could. 
you know, she's suggesting positions uh, to, to get into for the sex scene with Adrian Pastar. But uh, with our friend Leonard Roberts, no, not so much. So this guy believes uh, it's racism, and it probably uh, could well be. Uh, this is this is what I would like to say. I would like to point the finger of scorn at Hollywood. Uh, you clowns, stop virtue signaling to the rest of us normal people uh, about Black Lives Matter. Uh, stop virtue signaling to us about how uh, es- you know how social justice is important and we all need to get along. You people are crazy. You people are absolutely insane. Uh, you guys uh, can't even get along. You guys. Uh, Ali Larder evidently uh, influenced you to fire this guy somehow. Now, Ali Larder is saying, hey, I don't remember any of that, uh, you know, so I'm really sorry. Uh, I respect you as an actor, uh, and I, I'm so sorry that your experience on the set was so very, very different. I'm so sorry that you have these problems. Uh, very sorry. Uh, and everybody else is saying, what are you talking about, man? Uh, yeah, look, we look back on you fondly. You were great. This guy was fired after the first season, just a few episodes. Uh, they killed him by, uh, he's like, I got shot more than Tupac. They shot this guy's character. He's like, that's weird. Can I walk through walls? I guess bullets hurt me, though. That's odd. Uh, and he has all kinds of uh, complaints and suspicions about this. He's coming out now. He's pointing the finger of scorn. I will join him in pointing the finger of scorn. Uh, at SJW Hol- uh, Hollywood. Oh, I remember the guy's name, Jeff Loeb. Jeff Loeb, the writer of this. You know, and that's why I didn't watch this show. I don't want to watch that guy. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, I will. I will join him in uh, pointing the finger of scorn uh, at all of uh, Hollywood. All of these people who spend time, uh, you know, ruining entertainment with their uh, with their propaganda, with their virtue signaling, with their nonsense, their identity politics that they themselves cannot even abide by. You can't, you can't uh, take care of your black actors. You got to treat these guys. Well, okay, I'm, I'm going completely by his account to be fair, uh, because it's funnier uh, to point the finger of scorn at this guy. Uh, but, but who really knows? All I'm saying is Ray Fisher, uh, this guy. There are going to be many, many more black actors who are going to come out and say, "Look, I had a role. I was mistreated. I was not uh, elevated." This guy had lunch with one of his friends, and he was complaining a little bit about how he tre- how he was treated on Heroes. They said, come on, man. Uh, can't you see? They're always going to keep the hot blonde on the show. They're going to take her side because people are watching for the hot blonde, not you. Uh, and frankly, in my opinion, I agree. I'm, I'm watching for Ali Larder. But uh, he said, don't you understand? What you are saying right now is proof of systemic racism. Uh, that they would take her side just because of her immutable uh, attributes uh, and uh, not take mine because of my immutable. What if I'm a really good actor? Well, uh, if you were, you might have gotten another job in the last 10 years. Uh, that is uh, that is true. I think he is working now, according to the article. But in any case, uh, this is another Ray Fisher situation. There will be more of these uh, as, uh, you know, since Black Lives Matter is a big thing, uh, we are going to have uh, actors, people of color coming out and pointing the finger of scorn. Uh, pointing their bigots out, pointing these racists out, uh, these same people that lecture you every day, that donate to big Democrat causes. And I got to say, I'm, I'm just going to sit back and uh, with a big bowl of popcorn and enjoy the show. Uh, I hope that you do too. It should be kind of fun. By the way, the article that this guy wrote uh, started out with a little story. Uh, and this is the thing that, uh, and this guy's definitely an SJW, obviously, you know. So, uh, SJWs always start out with stories about their kids uh, who are wiser than maybe their age might suggest and how you have to let them know as a parent how horrible the world is. I've never let any of my kids know how horrible the world is. I'm going to let them find out for themselves. But he's like, we were walking down the street and a lot of businesses were boarding up their doors. And she said, why are they boarding up? My daughter said, why are they boarding up their doors, daddy? And I said, because people always, they're a little scared. People always get scared when black people demand things. And I think it's probably because people were setting fire to businesses and looting them, you know, not because they were demanding things. Indeed, uh, I think you demanding your dignity on the set of heroes uh, was uh, fair play. I think you should have demanded your dignity. I think that uh, p- they should have honored their contract with you. They should have uh, actually worked to make your character uh, at least as important as Ali Larder's character. But on the other hand, no, I, I disagree with you. I, I don't think that uh, people boarding up their buildings are doing so because uh, they're afraid of black people demanding things. I think it's because it's their small business and they don't want to get it looted, raided, uh, and destroyed. 
Uh, in any case, let me know what you guys think of this story. Um, everyone's, it's pretty funny. I mean, at this point right now, Allie Larder is kind of apologetic. She's saying, I don't remember it being like that. You know, everyone is kind of gaslighting him, uh, which is exactly what happened to Ray Fisher until Jason Momoa stood up. When Jason Momoa stood up, everything changed. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. There might be an opportunity for one of the uh, other actors, perhaps a white actor from Heroes, to stand up and say, yeah, I remember that. What happened to you was wrong. Uh, you know, maybe Zachary Quinto, uh, who is gay, uh, he will stand up. And then Zachary Quinto, people are still giving him work. Uh, he will, uh, I don't know, maybe that'll make some more people fall in line. I don't really know. Who knows? Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, like, share, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you again later with another video. Bye. New from all caps comics, Rainbow the Brute, the last real man in Fairyland. A tale of prismatic pain, a spectrum of brutality, and a pretty good dad. Choke slam a unicorn by backing it today, only on Indiegogo. Hey, you want to follow me on Twitter? Are you sure? Well, if so, I'm at Ethan Van Skyver. That's at Ethan Van Skyver. See you there. Hey, I got a P.O. Box. Want to send me some mail? Send it to Ethan Van Skyver. P.O. Box 607, Marlton, New Jersey, 08053. And I'll probably open it up on the live stream. Thanks very much, everyone.